and a bro fist to you all, you wonderful people. I hope you're having a great Friday. Everything's going pretty fucking awesome here. Tired. Been doing a lot this week, as many as you know. Putting out some new shows and all that kind of good stuff. Did realize that absolutely none of you care about virtual reality in terms of getting it for yourselves. Quite like it when we play it. Don't really care whether or not you're going to buy it or not. I think we got that message loud and clear with like only 10,000 people giving a shit whether we got... <laughs> Which one's better, the Vive or the PSVR? Your response as an audience was... Couldn't give a shit. <laughs> Couldn't give a shit. I'm not getting either. Loud and clear, team. Loud and clear. But on that note, as you can see down below, as you can see down below, uh, we're having a Halloween horror special. Yes, our costumes have arrived. That's right. We're having Halloween costumes. Yeah. Why is it not on Halloween, you might ask? Well, one, uh, we're getting a world exclusive horror VR game, which is. See the way, see the way I, I sidetracked into that? see that um we, uh, we're gonna have a, a will first exclusive don't know if it's good don't know we'll have something backed up in case but we have got a it's our first ever one where companies like letting us have a game early to be the ones to show it off so we're gonna be doing that we also got your horror transmogs your themed scary transmogs they can be the most horrific horror horror and halloween uh, is all that good stuff. So we're going to be doing that as well. And we've got uh, costumes and stuff. But be aware. It will be some scary stuff on the show. I'm pre-warning you now. We have some surprising stuff for you that might be a bit scary. So if you like can't handle. <laughs> if you can't. Ha I'm not joking. Stop smiling. If you Deadpan. If you can't handle it. Like if you get afraid of like things. You shouldn't watch. Because there are some things that we've set up. That are a little freaky they're not like scary scary i don't think so <laughs> scary or scary bad spooky skeletons we've got props i don't want to show them off i sh i can show them off i've got we've got props we've got no. costumes i know no. i'm so tempted when i'm on front of the camera to show it all off uh, he's gonna get his dick out no 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 uh but yeah it's uh, well it's a halloween show so it's supposed to be that way so we're gonna be doing some horror vr and all that kind of good stuff and the reason again it's on tuesday is because we might be at london comic-con uh next weekend for twitch so if we're doing that it's not confirmed yet they're still trying to work it out those guys really like to leave it to the last minute for some reason i don't know uh so if we're gonna be there we'll let you know but we might not have a web show on saturday because of that so we have a show on tuesday uh, the web show time so it's tuesday tuesday all right it's tuesday ghosty is still here but ghosty is currently reviewing a game so he's busy 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 uh <laughs> bomb of the dps in alpha spoopy 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the other bots better work for once i'm sure they'll be all over it don't you worry uh it's gonna be good it's gonna be good so we've got all that coming this week and hopefully i mean fingers crossed i already said on twitter fingers crossed i my kids only came back last night Maybe Mr. a fucking raid. Fucking family. Delayed flight arrives during the raid. So I had to miss the raid. Fucking scum, mate. Scum. Scum. Uh, my family's back, so I'm going to spend some time with them tomorrow and be family man, but I hopefully we'll have the next Legacy out on Patreon on Sunday. Hopefully. I mean, you know, I'm with my kids. If, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Uh, so it's going to be a G-Kit. Casual. I know. Should have let her get a taxi, right? I haven't seen my kids in a week, but still, don't fucking do that. Don't fucking do that. Uh, the bis drops, maybe. Uh, I don't know what drops, so probably the trinket I've been after forever in a fucking year. Or I would have coined it anyway. So let's have some drama to wash out and relax, because uh, I've got a busy weekend. Oh, streaming next week. Yeah, so we've got the thing on Tuesday. Dark Souls 3's DLC comes out on the Tuesday as well, uh, I think. According to our schedule, it does anyway. So we might, I might be streaming that during the day. Uh, that'll be Tuesday. I believe. Someone can confirm. Can, can believe. Uh, team E. <laughs> team, hey, our Team 5 killed Heroic Xavius. They're getting there, man. Right then. Let's have some people in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you ready? You ready to praise the sun? I'm ready to find out uh, that From's releasing Bloodborne 2 on the Nintendo Switch. You ready for that? definitely definitely going on definitely going on you know it the nintendo switch is all about bloodborne 2 that's the only way it's going to go down man the three tanking two trinkets drops that's all right with me i don't mind <laughs> i don't mind that's pretty good <laughs> not a racist <laughs> uh <clears throat> 
Uh, about the abusive relationship, no kill too easy, no. <laughs> There's no place on here for that. I do have a really, um, I do have a really sort of semi-dark story today. We'll see, we'll feel it out. I'll feel how you guys are, and then I'll feel how I'm feeling, and see if we're gonna see if it's gonna work out. Okay. So we've got here a raid leader who will be Rognus, a mythic raider friend Thordison, and a lady Carter, and a lady. And a lady. Mm. Yeah, the Nintendo Switch does look really cool, actually. I love Nintendo. I'm a Nintendo fanboy. I'm all over it. I don't mind. Okay. Here we go. How could this end badly? Good afternoon, Preacher. I'm a long-time player, and I've come today to share a story of what happened to me around the time of High Mall and Blackrock Foundry. That's Wards of Draenor. This is not the Halloween show. Just stay focused, team. We're playing Ward. With quite a lot of my real-life friends. A bit of backstory. I'm from the UK. But due to wanting a change of scenery, me and my parents are now Team Australia. And ever since, I have been lucky enough to find people in real life that enjoy WoW as much as I do. However, with this just said, when I decided to pick up World of Warcraft again, I made a common newbie mistake. Now he wants me to ask you, can you guess what his newbie mistake was? Okay. Can you guess what his newbie mistake was? After what I've just told you. Can you guess? Can you guess? I asked my friends, why don't we start a real life friends guild? Ah, Thomas was all over it. Thomas was all over it. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to make a real life friends guild. This would become a terrible, terrible idea, as my story will detail. Now, it should be noted that we weren't trying to be hardcore, heavy metal, crawling in my skin guild, but a progressive guild, and clearing content at a reasonable pace. So at pre-patch of Walls of Draenor, we planned to make our guild. However, fun thing, no one, no one, had elected to be guild leader. And out of nowhere, a friend just used the name we decided on the night to make the guild. No one at this point could care less, but in real life, he was a very, very controlling person. I'm talking, of course, about Rognus. If something wasn't within his grasp, you will all know about it. So we let the whining baby have his bottle and move on. We, so we're kicking off our real life friends guild by promoting the whingiest, whiniest bitch, Guildmaster. So with the guild set up, we needed a raid leader. Hey, we've got one of them. <laughs> a big problem was that no one wanted to be raid leader. So it wasn't until a few days before Highmall releasing that we actually decided that Rognus should also be raid leader. And the only reason why it happened was that no one else would offer to do it. I don't know why alarm sounds weren't sounding off, but they should have been. Nothing like a guild where no one wants to be, uh, you know, in control of anything. <laughs> or take, take any responsibility whatsoever. It's a guild full of DPS rogues. That's what we've got here. We've got a guild full of DPS rogues. So what's released? It was really tame for the guild. And nothing much happened. I got my Frost Mage to 100 and knew that I was fucking hyped. I got my item level required to be more than fine in the raid. I was going to be raiding with people I like in the real world. And best of all, we were all going to have that fun and those bants. Friday night came. We're all here and people are excited and talking and playing with toys and being nice. I was so pleased to see all my friends together. We cleared the trash and reached Kargath. We wiped. But after that, we killed it, right? So he did die. It's the important thing, he did die. One big concern though, we did notice something. One big concern was that some people were doing well, but we had a few people who were, let's say lacking on dps but i thought no problem 
we were getting progression, right? Bosses were dying. Gargas down. On farm confirmed. So with this momentum, with our first raid victory under our belt, now we're winning. We went to the butcher. We had a few wipes, but he was downed the same night. That's two bosses one night, motherfuckers. Yeah? Two bosses one night. Boom. Kicking ass. It was a great victory for our small, real-life friends guild. But then we heard those words. Rise mountain. Rise mountain. Rise mountain. The words rise mountain have been firmly embedded into the back of my head due to this guild. <sighs> Once basic actual mechanics were introduced, people's brains seemed to melt out of their ears. Rognus, the raid leader, would put a raid warning every single time to run right. <laughs> so that the group stacking wouldn't get hit. There were many a wipe due to people, and this infuriated me more than anything. Sorry. Didn't know it was on me. Smiley face. That fucking smiley face drove me to despair. Because we're all friends, right? It's just a bit of ban- It's only a video game. That's all. How did I know that the red line that slowly, slowly- slowly crawls towards me was aiming at me how was i supposed to know you don't even make any fucking sense man you don't even make any s <laughs> sorry smiley face <laughs> see fun bit of bants it took us two weeks to down tech as normal after that we moved on to bracken spore i can only describe it as pain incarnate there were arguments between everyone on what mushroom should be stacked. And people with flamethrowers, and I swear to God, Preacher, at one point I saw someone with a flamethrower just running through the middle of the room. Were just ignoring the green shit and trying to DPS with it. It was chaos. <laughs> you can just imagine, you're calling out blue mushroom, right? And then you just see like this troll hunter. Just running across the background with his flamethrower going. Like, fuck yeah, I got this, right? I'm fucking all over it. Choo-choo, burn, baby, burn. It's all good, man. Yeah, the boss is vulnerable to fire. Duh, stupid. <clears throat> Enter Thordeson, our mythic raider friend. I love Thordeson. No homo, though. He only eats pussy, lads. He came into our raid. He showed us where we were going wrong. And in real life, he was chill as fuck. However, one of our randoms from our guild that we had picked a few weeks ago didn't like that our friend was telling us what to do on Brackenspore. And in the middle of Thordeson's explanation of what we were doing wrong, random butts in. Are you ready? You ready for the trigger? The adults are talking. We have better strats than yours. Cunt! I would like to say that off the bat, Thordson's 24 and was giving us real fucking advice. Thordson then said, <clears throat> Please show me how you wiped a normal Bracken Spore for a month. Okay, show me your awesome strats then. Because as far as I know, you've been stuck here for a month. So please, demonstrate. Demonstrate the awesome strats. Rodnus, for some unknown reason, maybe he felt defensive, sided with the random in our guild instead of Thordeson. Who we were all friends with and knew who would be right at the end of this. We tried Brackenspore again. Thordeson didn't say a word and then left the raid after the wipe. I don't blame him at all, and this was the only beginning of our problems that our guild had started to create. It's not a pissing contest, right? It's a fucking boss. It's not a pissing contest. It gets worse than the Wall of Silence. Later, we did down Bracken Spore Normal. Can I get a fist? Yes. Yes. And we reached the Twin Ogron. 
our problems problems were really starting to show. Attendance was becoming an issue, and we barely able to scrape 10 players some nights. Getting pugs was becoming more and more prevalent. The next issue, and this had been building since the second or third week of raiding, is that nobody spoke. Utter silence most of the raid night. And most of the guys and girls are really social in real life. When it came to raiding, though, Rognus would read off a list of mechanics and silence. Dead silence. After the raid, they would all just log off and went to bed. It was weird. It became so boring after a while. I would try and start a conversation and nobody would answer. Or I would get the most ridiculous, dumb, simple answer. Chat during raids is distracting. I demand silence. Silence. No speak. Not even on, not even on trash. Should fuck up. Focus. Right? Raid leader needs to speak. Another issue that we had found was that while we are casual, and I understand that so many people in our raid aren't good, but I still can't believe just how not good they are. Even after so many tries at so many bosses, they would still wipe to Texas week after week until we finally got it down. And we couldn't kick them because they were RL friends. All we were allowed to say under Rognus's leadership was, don't worry, mate, we'll get it next time. Yeah, that's the kind of enthusiasm you need. You've only died to this. 30 or 40 times over the last sort of like three month period. But don't worry, mate. You got this, yeah? Don't even worry about it. We're a team of RLs. We're going to Mickey D's after this. It's all going to be good. So then, the breaking point. It should be explained that for raids, we were using a team speak that I was an admin of, but it was public. And I was in charge of all the business that went down when it comes down to team speak. He's the guild team speak guy. You got a guild team speak guy? You got a guild discord guy? He's the team speak guy. Usually means the guy who pays for it, right? Do you remember the guild ventrilo guy? He's the guy who pays for it. That's who he is. One night we needed a few pugs. And we managed to run into another small guild group that wanted to merge with us for a night and get the raid on. We didn't have a lot of choice because we didn't have enough players. So we thought, sure. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, okay. Now our basic procedure on this community team speak is an admin to make sure that everyone who connects is that they aren't connecting via vpn because our server gets regularly ddosed it's a basic security clearance pretty much and even with my bachelor's in it security i knew it wouldn't do much but the owner insisted that we just made sure no one used a vpn sorry i had to drop that the bachelor's in there but i graduated last week chat can we get a wall of love can we get it in there? Or a wall of dish faces? It's up to you. It's up to you. I'll leave you guys to decide. <clears throat> now, this type of procedure is very, very simple. And I could do it in about 10 seconds for each person. So I mentioned in the chat that the new people will have to wait a couple of minutes. No problem. Enter Carter. Carter had been a regular face in our raids. And one of the few people that was not a real life friend. She had known Rognus, the raid leader, for a while before we started raiding. And to this date, I have never been so furious over the internet before I met her and had this happen to me. After I had mentioned that I was checking people's IPs to make sure they weren't using VPNs, she instantly uttered these words. Whoa, that's really fucking racist, profi profiling people like that. I, at this point, I was just confused and stunned. This was the first time in my life I had been called out for being racist in a serious tone before. I tried to laugh it up and thought she meant it as a joke. Nope. She was dead fucking serious. You're a racist. I tried to explain to Carter that if I didn't do this and something bad was to happen to what I did, I would lose our privileges to use the team speak. You're a racist. You just assume about me? She was defiant that I was doing it out of pure racism. 
So what followed from me was pure rage. Well, fuck off then. That's <laughs> what I told her. I'm amazed that someone as retarded as you actually exists. Now you can sit there and be so righteous goes beyond belief, you bellend. Just fuck off out of our raid. And Carter did. It should also be noted that all the pugs from before this were also in the room. And while most were in my defense of me that it was purely idiotic, I was told to chill the fuck out. The raid tried to clear out the next boss, but after just two wipes, Rognus, the raid leader, called it and said I needed to go into a private chat. Rognus had explained to Carter a few things and tried to calm her down. However, he then said the following to me. For your racism and attitude you use today, I'm going to give you a warning. <laughs> I could only think of one reply. Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! Nothing I did was racist. I did nothing wrong. This is our team speak. You can't give me a warning for it. I left the chat immediately and still couldn't believe that I was being accused of racism for following the team speak rules. I also understand that I do sound pompous, but this is something so basic that should be so simple to understand. But they weighed it as hard as possible. So where are they now? <laughs> this sounds racist to me. The chat is not on your side. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The chat is not on your side. Checking IPs for the team speak. That's it. That's it. This was my second to last raid with that guild. I threw in the towel when we tried Blackrock and just gave up with Walls of Draenor. And then the guild fucked itself inside out. It merged with three other guilds that were struggling to get over these difficult bosses like Orgorja. It lasted less than a few weeks and my guild officially died. For myself, I'd left them behind and decided to be my own man and fuck that guild. While it was fun, it was the most furious and boring moments of my WoW life. I have now joined a guild that actually makes progress. We're on 1 out of 7 Mythic. However, due to the fact that I'm maining a... Fury Warrior. I decided that out of the 22 people that do heroics that I raise my hand that I should be the bench warmer. I just generally don't feel that good about raiding. For now. As for my old guild, they have fallen by the wayside. And they tried to start up in Legion as an extreme... <laughs> I knew the chat was going to react. <laughs> as an extreme can... Whoa! I've never seen this before. They tried to turn themselves into, and I quote, an extreme casual guild. An extreme casual guild. Only three of their ten members near the 840 item level required for normal EN. I hope you enjoyed my little story. I have newbie stories as well. Uh, as another racist story from my latest guild. Are you sure you're not racist? <laughs> you have another racist story? I only have one racist story. <laughs> That's it. I only have one. you think I'd have way more with uh, how we talk on this show. But no. It's not happening. We need to try harder, Andy. Right. Shoot. Right. <laughs> Extreme casual guild. Do you guys want... I have a really, really sad story. It's about divorce. I'm pre-warning you because if you guys... Do you want this or not? It's, it ends kind of happily. <laughs> do you want it or not? <laughs> it's pretty funny for the most part, honestly. <laughs> it's pretty funny for the most part. Yeah, you okay with it? Good. All right. It's got some sads in there, but we'll pull it back. I swear to God. I don't want to... I, I never want you guys to walk away feeling sad. So we're going to pull it back out. Me because I got you... Oh, there's a good point. Can everybody stop linking me the fucking sinew trinket constantly? Thank you. I'd appreciate that a lot. I get it. I don't have it. You can stop linking it to me. It happens at least 12 times a day now. Just just leave it alone. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings, Preacher. Oh, I need to change the shit, don't I? You think I've done this show before? Nope. gonna call it this all right uh, we have to pick the names as we go through okay we're gonna be fine we're gonna be fine I believe in us I believe in us as a team all right greetings preaching ghosty if present all right mate hello 
Much love from Team Sweet. Team Sweet. I've been a big fan of all your shows, in particular the legacy videos, and of course, Drama Time. I figured it's time to bring my drama to the table. <sighs> Here we go. My gaming career started out pretty much at the tender age of six. When I was the first time experienced the hardcore, unbelievable power of the PlayStation 1. Woohoo! Yeah! Look at that! Remember these? Memory cards. Nintendo Switch, bringing it back. That PlayStation 1, though. Do you remember the first Resident Evil cutscene? Dude. Dude. Mind blowing. Like, like CGI shit. Crazy. It was an undeniable romance from the start, and I was hooked. My older brother and myself were hitting that console gaming as often as possible, within the restriction of our not-so-interested dad. Eventually, though, we upgraded. Oh, it's over there. I can't reach it. We upgraded to the PlayStation 2. And I ran through game after game until we collected a fairly huge pile of plastic boxes full of content that got boring too fast. Twisted Metal, bro, never gets old. Twisted Metal never gets old. Bro, bro, do you even? Do you even? Fucking make me sick. And until I discovered the first game that really gripped me and never let me go. It wasn't Mario or Zelda like the Nintendo fans. It was Ratchet and Clank. I played the shit out of it for years to come. Never played Ratchet and Clank. Never played it. It's a bit like Banjo. I get it's a bit like Banjo. I think it's a bit like Banjo. I'm guessing though. As I got older though, I started discovering the family PC was for more than just word. Bigger than a potato, but not quite as fast as one. But it was enough to run my website client games that carried me for a while. I got some of that Counter-Strike 1.6 action before my parents busted me and decided that killing terrorists was a little too mature for a nine-year-old. <laughs> if you're in America, though, <laughs> that's this Swedish pussiness, right? All this Care Bear Swedish attitude. You gotta be training. You gotta down the terrorists, man. You gotta, what, what age in America did you play your first game of Counter-Strike? Like kindergarten or what? Nice, 1.6. Nice. <laughs> to much disappointment, I found myself without anything interesting to play. Three. <laughs> We're going with three. Three seems to be the average age. Okay. So I should get my son some. Alright. Without anything interesting to play. I played... <laughs> I played some of The Sims 2 with my brother, and we we had some fun making a few teenagers, but only to realise that we couldn't get past the character creation screen without an adult character in the family. We decided to make an old grandmother, hoping she would die fast so we could live in our huge mansion without any parental supervision. I'm just going to read this through. We named the grandmother Pooh, since we figured she would be gone pretty fast anyways. This, however, wasn't as easy as planned. She was a very young retiree, and she had a long life to live. So we did the only logical thing. We got her to swim in the pool out back and remove the ladder, so she would drown to enhance the process. The plan worked, and soon enough, Mr. Reaper came down from the heavens and claimed Nana Pooh. And left us with only, th with only one thing. A tombstone next to our pool simply saying Rip Poo. This wasn't optimal for a couple of teens ready to party hard in our Sims man cave. We decided to just delete the game forever. <laughs> Feels bad, man. <laughs> Nana Poo. Poor old Nana Poo. Oh, man. I love the, there's so many aspects of this that I love. One, the fact that you were like really immersed in being teenagers in your own party house. We're upset that you needed adult supervision in the game of The Sims 2. You tried to make an old woman so she would die of old age. You then murdered her. And then because there's a tombstone of Rip Poo, you thought that was going to then lower your chances of virtually scoring in The Sims because of the tombstone. And therefore it wasn't good enough. Like, how can we have a party with a tombstone near the pool? You get me? You get me? I love all of that. 
Some time passed and I followed a friend home to play some Xbox at his house. He showed me this game called World of Warcraft. I had no words to describe the angel-like game in front of me. My friend went on to explain that this was an MMO RPG. And that you could play with people from all over the world. Ah, a simpler time. And he began showing me the adventures of his gnome warlock. I basically sat with my jaw dropped on the floor for hours watching him play. And finally I got a try. I created my own gnome warlock. I got to the impressive level of six in an hour before I got the heartbreaking call from mummy telling me it was time to come home for dinner. Not being able to stop thinking about wow, I walked home with sadness. At this point, I got my first in real life quest, convincing my parents that then buying me this game and paying for the monthly fee was a good idea. Easier said than done though, chat. Mm -hmm. For months, I pleaded every day, dropping hints and facts on them, but they did not drop a single inch in my favor. So at last, I simply let it go and moved on with my life for now. It's worth mentioning that during this time, though, my parents were going through some issues, and I was deeply worried that they would eventually split up. So I figured I had to do something to help. It's about to get real on you. It's about to get real. So one night, and I'm completely serious about this chat, I sat at the edge of my bunk bed with my older brother sleeping in the top bunk, snoring as always. My hands to my forehead and I prayed to the maybe existing God up there that if I could have only one wish, it would be that my parents would sort everything out and we would be the happy family for all time to come. And I swear to the same God preacher, it got better. The discussions became virtually non-existent and it was good. Really good. This was the sign I had been waiting for. At a very early age, I questioned the existence of God. Skeptic from the first years of my life, but this was the sign. There was a God, and he or she granted me this one wish. It was good. With the family intact, I turned my focus to other priorities of being 10. One day, coming home from soccer, I was thinking about WoW again. I had been playing at my friend's house from time to time. We had a system. Each person got an hour at the PC doing whatever they wanted, usually playing WoW, while others played Xbox, and then we switched over. I was far from alone in being addicted to the game. Without a subscription or anything else, we all gathered there. At some points, we were over six people squashed into that room of his, waiting for our turn to enter Azeroth. These sessions got more and more crowded, and it started to no longer feel worth it. So on the way home, I remembered what I'd done for my parents. To some hubris, I figured that God would grant me wishes if I wished hard enough. It had worked before. So I closed my eyes. Right in the middle of my home street. And wished and wished for my parents to change their minds and buy me the game. It's ten years old. Alright. A week passed, and this would be one of the defining days of my short life. Somehow my arguments started to get through to them, and they slowly tilted in my direction. At last they said that beautiful three-letter word, yes. Overjoyed isn't enough to describe the emotions going through my mind, soul, and body. As soon as I possible, as soon as possible, I forced my dad to drive me to the mall and get my battle chest with Lich King being released somewhere around this point. I upgraded my trial account where I had a level 20 warrior and warlock and in I went. It was everything I had dreamed of and everything was right with the world. Once again, exactly one week passed and my parents called me and my brother into the kitchen to sit at the table. We sat down and from the second I saw the expression of my parents' faces, I knew what was happening. I went to bed crying into my pillow that night, and the next morning I was utterly and truly convinced of one thing. That I had caused the divorce. I had removed my wish protecting from, spit, from splitting up and moved it over to World of Warcraft. I felt the worst ever in trading my wish for parents for a video game. Time passed, it took a few months before I had the courage to tell my parents what I had done. Aww. That's horrible, man. You, worth fuckers. You guys are fuckers. 
worth. <laughs> oh man, he was convinced for so long that he had caused his parents to split up because he wanted WoW. That's terrible. You fucking worth. <laughs> You're a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty double gay. Oh, he's 10 years old. <clears throat> of course, I wasn't the reason behind this, but I was young and naive. And even though all of my parents pleading and explanations, I was totally convinced that God had caused well, my wish to God had caused my parents to split up and for me to get World of Warcraft. And as a result, I couldn't look at WoW because of how guilty it made me feel. Oh, he's 10. 10 years old there is more detailed story but i don't but i think any longer would be so long so i finished this with a slightly happier note i still have a warrior and warlock to this day and the warrior has been my main since the beginning mainly due to the fact that i don't think i was allowed to play more flashy classes since i was just a beginner so i stuck with my warrior throughout all the expansions making an alt here and there i raided some in wrath and kata but turned straight away from the pandas and wow has been on and off romance for the past few years I hope you enjoyed my story, even though the mood is slightly more depressing than joyful. But I think all types of drama are good. To be fair, the chat took it very well. <laughs> I think that's what we need to remember. You might be depressed, and I feel bad for you, man. I don't want my kids thinking they did something like that. But the chat took it really well. In fact, they believe it's worth... So, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'll leave it there. Right, then. You guys are horrible, man. I, you guys are too... You, 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 you're too you're too strong you know what i mean you're desensitized that's what's happened here you guys have been desensitized to the plight wait you you gotta call a 10 year old double gay <laughs> that's terrible man that's terrible right i need two people <laughs> oh oh thank you it was a donation thank you very much zach but i have to turn my phone off because it's during the show thank you very much um, all right. What happened to you people? I feel somewhat responsible. I feel somewhat responsible. I do. I feel you guys should you shouldn't be reacting that way. You shouldn't be saying worth. You shouldn't be doing that. Bad, bad audience. Naughty, naughty. Right then. Hello, preacher. Go see it. A big bro fist. What time we are? Oh, cool. From New Zealand. I've been listening to you for many years now, but I've only recently turned on to Drama Friday. It blows my mind when that happens. You know how many people watch every video except Drama Time and then watch it and they're like, oh, <laughs> didn't realize this was it. I was immediately intrigued and thought you might enjoy my very own noobish story. So my story starts off when I'm 13 years old. I had just finished Warcraft 3 and I crave more. This is when I found WoW. I saved my pocket swag cash and purchased a brand new copy of WoW and the Burning Crusade, as well as a prepaid game time card. It was a Friday. I raced home from school and headed straight to my room to install all the discs. <laughs> all the discs. How many discs was Wrath of the Lich King? Was it one? I think so. Yes. I waited patiently. And seven hours later, the updates had finished and I was ready to play. At this point, it was midnight, but I didn't care. I launched the game from the desktops to the sounds of, You are not prepared. Needless to say, I was hooked. I mean, how fucking cool is the TBC cinematic? Am I right? The server selection screen popped up. And not being a fucking noob, mate. Yeah? Shut up. Move. Being intelligent. I, of course, picked the low-population PvE server of Aman Fool because I had been told that WoW has lag. You got outplayed again, game. Outplayed again. <laughs> now, uh, the chat loves this. What do you think I created? Bear in mind that I am a Kiwi. So, of course, I am all about that Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I am all about that Lord of the Rings. I immediately rolled Horde. And settled for that Blood Elf Hunter. Much to my surprise, the name Legolas had been taken. Now, note here, I was legitimately surprised. <laughs> I went completely blank. I was convinced for the last seven hours that I was going to be Legolas. I remember thinking that I'm grown up now. I was 13. 
And I was impressed with myself that I no longer wanted to name my cells with X's in them, like XX Dragon Skull Smasher Killer XX52. But why couldn't I have Legolas? <laughs> I was so pissed I immediately logged off. That's it. I've got nothing left. I had I had this one name ready. And I can't fucking believe that someone else in the world also used Legolas. It makes no fucking sense, man. That is bullshit. Now, I don't know this name, and I don't think I'm allowed to use it. But the next day I logged on and tried again, settling for the name. I'm going to send this to... Alright, Ghosty! Is this a Lord of the Rings name? I don't even know if you can hear me. Andy! Fuck it. I don't think so. That morning, I leveled through the Sunstrider Isle, the Sunstrider Isles, all the way to level six, where I ran out of arrows. Bastard! Bastard! After a few hours of aimlessly running around, I worked out that, that you could buy more arrows, and I crossed the harrowing bridge into the area where I would face level five and six mobs. I'm going to be honest. I was very, very bad at this game. I was a clicker. I used my arrow keys to move. How do you even play like that? What? Ugh. Ugh that's horrible. Ugh. Well. I'm going to tell you an honest truth here, preacher. <laughs> I died a lot on my way to level 10. But the main way that I died was trying to get five yards away to meet the range requirement for bows. <laughs> to, me to death. He's trying to kite. He's trying to kite, man. He's trying to get his kite on. He's just dying to it. <laughs> Fucking amazing, man. <laughs> so at level 10, it was a lifesaver. I was finally able to get my pet. It was great. This was fantastic. I'll never have to work again. My pet will do everything for me. I leveled for hours. More hours than I care to admit to realize that I actually had to hit the mobs in order to receive experience or loot. Maybe it's the mobs. Maybe I need different mobs. How can this not be working? <laughs> I don't understand how this isn't working. What? My pet's got it. Surely it'll be fine. <laughs> Surely it'll be fine. Uh, not to mention that my pet ran away several times. Why? Why did his pet run away several times? Come on. I haven't done the Legacy of the Hunter, so some of you might not know, actually. Uh, but um, not to mention that my pet... Ran away several times because I didn't realize I had to feed it to keep it happy. Didn't feed it. There you go. You guys know. Oh, I miss feeding my pet. I know it's I know it's super double gay, but I love feeding my pet. I loved it. I was giving him his best food. You got, you got that happy face. That's all I need to see. It's like fucking uh, what are things called that used to cook the tamagotchis. It's like a tamagotchi. I fucking love that shit. He's so happy. Look at him. He's happy. He's happy. He's a happy little guy. Okay. After a few <laughs> triple gay, <laughs> after a few more days of questing in the beautiful Eversong woods, I was level fifteen, and came to the realization that there was no quest left in this area. Left in this area, so I turned to my map. I saw the dreaded scar of scorched earth that ran south, and decided my be next best bet was the Ghostlands. To this day, the Ghostlands is still one of my favourite zones. Not because the zone is great or even good, because it isn't. But because it holds a special place in my heart, as I spent the next month questing there. By the time I decided to move on, I was exalted with tranquility, was kitted out in some sick blues, and was level 24. Fucking level 24. There were no quests left. Mobs were worth no experience, and I had no idea where to go next. 
Logically, I figured my best move was to continue heading south. I arrived in the eastern Plaguelands, followed by days of dying to banshees. I eventually went back to the Ghostlands, my safe haven, my happy place. Ghostlands? Shit, the Ghostlands. It's well shit, the Ghostlands. No, it is shit. We leveled through that on the release. It was crap. Yeah, it was fucking boring. The first island's really good. I don't like the Ghostlands. <clears throat> I did this. <laughs> so at least he's honoring up. I did this as well. I kindly asked the general chat, where do I level after the Ghostlands? I received some very helpful responses. <laughs> These included my mom's house, Alt F4 to activate the teleporter. And finally, finally, a helpful whisper appeared. I think he's only mentioned once, so he's a student, uh, an audience name. I finally, I finally a helpful response from Daddy Christmas, a level 62 mage, who said that I had to go to the Undercity. And I said, I can't get through the Plaguelands. So Daddy Christmas, the ever helpful mage, offered to give me a portal. Moments later, I was in the Swamp of Sorrows, where I died continuously to skull level mobs. <laughs> you fucking- You know he's a noob, Daddy Christmas. You fucking know he's a noob, man. You know it, and you just couldn't resist. You couldn't fucking resist. You stood there, and you're like, I got this, bro. And then you're looking at that portal list, and you're thinking, I can fucking do it. I can. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking do it. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Guy's level 24 in the Ghostlands and you still fucked him. You still fucked him. He's basically crawling on the fucking floor and you still kicked him. You're like, fuck it. <sighs> Upset with my predicament, I logged out and deleted my character. Well done, Daddy Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Sue. A week later, I decided to try again. I mean, I was an experienced player now. So I carefully read the racials and stat bonuses of every race. I saw absolutely no combat effectiveness for Arcane Torrent. Mana isn't useful to me, and I had never wanted to stop someone from talking. Silence. <laughs> Why do I want that? This Arcane Torrent shit's useless, man. What a crap, <laughs> what a crap fucking spell. <clears throat> so after much deliberation, I settled on my new Orc Hunter. Yeah, he signs the shit out of it, man. He's an experienced player now. He's got it. He's nailed it now. But this time, I did okay for myself. Until level 15. Where I was whispered by someone asking if I wanted to come to RFC. Not knowing anything about RFC, I said yes. They showed me the way. We went inside. I died and I was immediately kicked with showers of abuse. RFC is too much. Apparently, my pet was set to aggressive. <laughs> is that even a game anymore? I don't know. Yeah. Can you do that? Oh, I, I, I Skyped you a name. Is it a Lord of the Rings name? Can you check it for me after you kill that? <clears throat> Gotta get that aggressive, right? <sighs> I aggroed everything in 40 yards. No, it's not. <laughs> Bummer, man. <laughs> it's top for leveling. So good. <laughs> My noobishness did not stop there, though. At level 40, I found myself in Desolus, and I knew that I could finally, after all this time, get my 60% mount. Although I, of course, didn't have the 40 gold required to buy it. So off turtle farming I went. Four weeks I farmed turtles in Desolus. Four weeks I sold their shells to a vendor. Until I finally had enough money to buy money to buy my training and my sick wolf mount. <laughs> I got this. I fucking got this, man. I'm all over it. Them fucking turtles don't know what's about to go down. You're about to feel the bad, man. You are about to feel the bad. Those turtles are kicking it. <laughs> I was living the dream, vendoring my turtle shells. After my bad experience, though, hey, it's not all fucking bants, mate. It's not all bants. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you for why, all right? After my bad experience with Ragefire Chasm, 
I never attempted another instance again. That's enough of that. It's not for me. Yeah? Instances are just not for me. I'm going to leave that part of the game alone. But now I had a wolf mount. I pretty much thought I was unstoppable. I accepted to go to a Zulfarak run. Never forget. <coughs> With my new wolf mount. We got in there and we were in there for a couple of hours. We finally downed the last boss. And something dropped. Something I had never seen before. It was an epic weapon. What was it? Wow. Zulfarak. Check that name for me in Skype. Is it a Lord of the Rings name? Oh, right, okay. Please don't go and miss me. I asked you four times, the chat keeps mocking I was you. fucking playing a game. <laughs> it was the Fiery War X. Now, because I was an orc, I had figured that, of course, orcs can't aim very well. So I had been running melee all this time and immediately hit need, winning the axe. It's out of Knights of the Old Republic. All right, I'll leave it alone then. Much to the outrage of the arms warrior in the group, orcs don't really use bows. I took this into consideration when I rolled my hunter. It's not fucking stupid, right? No, you're not paying attention. Well, you think about it. Why would an orc... Have you ever seen an orc using a bow? Makes no sense. It's too big. Yeah, it's too big. That's more of like a blood elf thing, you know? That's like a Legolas thing. So I thought about it, and now it's all good. So now I'm melee with my fiery war axe. So... <laughs> The arms warrior lost his fucking mind, but I continued with that axe. I was a melee hunter until level 62, where I started being called a retard more and more, until eventually I was called a retard 12 times in a blood furnace run. <laughs> I vowed, I vowed this would be the last time I would be kicked from a dungeon for being called a retard. So I started to study my class. Bows? Crossbows? Guns? What? What is this? And so by the time I hit level cap, I got good. I got good. Real good, comparatively. I raided Karazhan with a casual guild before being picked up for a 25-man guild. I went on to raid and kill Kael'thas pre-nerf in TK. And even down everything but Illidan. Oh, feels bad, man. In the Black Temple. This was while running on dial-up, pretending I was a mature player for the guild who required players to be 18 plus, and playing with the lights off so I could hide from my parents when I was raiding late. <laughs> As if they don't know. As if they don't know, though. <laughs> if you ever not know when your kids are doing shit upstairs, we just can't be asked. <laughs> Let me tell you the story. You hear the feet and you're like... Sounds alright. <laughs> 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 I continued with this guild until the trial of the Crusader where I took a long unwanted break from Siege of Ogamar in Mists of Pandaria. My IRL friends said I was playing WoW too much. And now I played a Druid tank for a Mythic Progression guild on a much more populated server. I have never been back to the Swamp of Sorrows. Thank you for listening and I hope my story makes it to Drama Friday. Which it did. Don't tell the parents secrets. We just can't be bothered. <laughs> Fucking serious. Yeah? For, most, for some of you, I'm old enough to be your dad. So there you go. Does it look like it can be asked if you're fucking around? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, we've got seven minutes. And my kids are back. Can we make it? Right. <sighs> that one's way too big. Let me see if I can find a real short one real fast. Hold on. Hold on. Hold your horses. We're risking it for a biscuit. A young gun raid leader. It's written in notepad. We're good. I don't know what's in this one. As always, this might end badly. But we'll have a go. All right. Young gun raid leader. txt. <laughs> Make sure we all know that. Make sure we all know that. Uh, those names were in that story, right? Okay, so we'll keep them handy. If not, Digby and Sass. I'll put you back in. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, this is going to be horrible, isn't it? I always do this. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. All right. All the preacher, ghosty, and the ballers, and greetings from Norway. This story is about my raiding experience in Wrath of the Lich King. What? 
I fixed it. I fixed it. I fixed it. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry. I fixed it. I fixed it. The story is about my reigning experience in Wrath of the Lich King, and I'm sure it's a little bit out of the ordinary. Let's find out together. I haven't read this one. Let's see. My story starts in the Burning Crusade with me and my mate Digby, both at the crisp age of 11. Pubes on the pitch. Muff dive ready. We had been playing since vanilla and were absolutely dog shit, but I'd made it to level 70 on my troll hunter. On the troll hunter we shared. Oh my god, two of you played a troll hunter? Jesus. Ever since we started playing though, Digby's brother, Stas, who was older and wiser than us by the, by the epic age of 15, had of course been tolling, calling us total wankers since we started playing. <laughs> and mainly because... He thought Call of Duty was the shit and we weren't allowed to play it because it was too mature. It's true. It's true. You know what I mean? McTavish and all that. For life. For life. Soap. Soap, mate. Soap, not for kids. The story of soap, not for kids. You guys know it. But one day, one glorious day, we finally managed to get him to try it. And guess what? He thought WoW was fucking sweet. And ever since then, <laughs> He's been hooked. He tried our hunter and quickly realized he needed to get his own WoW account. He bought the game and made what I now see was a big mistake. An alliance. Another hunter. This time, a dwarf. This would cause us all to eventually roll alliance on his server. Me, another hunter, and Digby, a human priest. After he had bought a copy of the game for himself. Oh, no longer sharing. We managed to raid Karazhan and Gruul in the Burning Crusade and had generally good time together, doing dungeons, BGs, and failing gloriously in arenas. Time passed and Wrath eventually came knocking. We all bought the game and leveled our characters to 80. Me and Stas almost instantly rerolled Paladins because we wanted to tank and heal as a combo, but also have the option to go DPS. We got to level 80 and started gearing. It was around this time all started, we all started playing a lot more. More than we had ever done before. And my father decided it was time to fuck that right off. <laughs> and limited the amount of time I got to play on the PC. I was of course angry then, but in hindsight, it was probably a smart decision. My friends, however, lived about 30 seconds of walking from my house. So when I couldn't play anymore, I would simply go over to their house and watch them play well. <laughs> Good dad, you're not allowed to play well, but watching well, that's fine. A few weeks into Wrath, though, Digby and Stas were geared and have found a guild who were raiding Nax25. And after submitting applications, Digby with a fake age, they both got in. Digby is a dis priest and Stas is a holy paladin. Raid, raid night rolled around and we were all there. Them playing and me watching. The raid leader told them to get on vent. <clears throat> it is at this time, Preacher, I should mention that I've been blessed with two things in life. The ability to both speak and understand English quite well, and also really fucking early puberty. Get in, son. Yeah. You see, at the age of 12, my voice sounded like a 56-year-old sailor who'd been drinking, smoking, and fucking for the majority of his life. I am talking deep. Deep like the Atlantic Ocean. I had more hair in my ass crack than Ghosty has in his head. Don't it, mate. Don't that think so, mate. Don't, don't challenge the top knot, okay? I fucking compare my glorious locks to your ass hair. Twat! <laughs> now, back to the story. They were told to get in vent, and being the ballers that they were, had vent pre-installed. Whoa, next level gaming right there. And already open. The first raid night went okay until they wiped on Thaddeus for an hour and decided to call it a night. Now, this was a trial run for them both. So after the raid was finished, they were asked to join some of the officers in a different channel to talk about the raid, how they performed, and if they were to be accepted. We had no idea this was going to happen, and so we panicked. We told them we didn't have a mic and therefore couldn't talk. They said get in the channel anyways, and we did. They both got accepted, but on one condition. They would have to get a microphone. We said okay, and logged for the night. The next day, they both got mics. But there was still a problem. Both Stas and Digby were shit at English. And the guild being a mostly British one meant that English would have to be bang on and delicious. <laughs> Enter me, a 12 year old who sounds like a 50 year old and knows English. I was to be the speaker, the raid speaker on behalf of them. And explain what was being said. Of course without anyone noticing, it was in fact not them speaking. Being the way I am, I executed this task without flaw. 
I spoke English and then translated it to Norwegian and nobody from the guild had any idea it was me. Now during these raids, Stas was told to be more vocal by the raid leader since he was to be the so to speak head of the healers. Now he was topping the meters with those fat flashes of light. This of course meant me being more vocal. I'd have to call out for healing cooldowns such as Divine Hymn and Tranquility. And also after the raids, talk with the officers about how the raid had gone and what could be improved despite not having actually played in the raid at all. Because I was doing such a smashing job of this, Stas was promoted to officer in the guild. And this in turn meant that I had to become to my friends earlier before each raid to discuss with the officers of the guild who we would bring to raids, who to gear up for Ulduar progression once the patch dropped. And I did this every raid night without flaw. Right? Right before the start of Ulduar, the raid leader told us he would have to take a break from the game because of RL, and said we were, and said we should find a new raid leader. This was discussed in officer chat, who decided that Stas was to be the new raid leader. This meant, of course, that I was now the raid leader. Keep in mind, preacher, that I am 12 to 13 years old, and the only raid I have ever actually done is Karazhan and Gruul's Lair. But I have raided Nax of Sidium Sanctum I of Eternity, not in WoW, but on Ventrilo. <laughs> Ulduar comes and we start raiding. We wipe continuously on Flame Leviathan with the fucking tanks and choppers. After the raid, we all talk in the officer room and I tell them that this is the first time I've ever led a raid and I need to learn this. They all agree and we wipe on Flame Leviathan for a very long time. But after the bosses start to drop slowly but surely, Ignis dies, Razor Scale falls, XT dies with that awesome voice acting, and the rest fall like dominoes. At this point, they like me as a raid leader. I'm good at raid leading. And it is decided, even though the old raid leader is back, that I should continue raid leading. We kill Yogg, service second, and we're all ecstatic. Time passed and we also killed Trial of the Crusader or whatever, but the raid was so shit, I don't want to think of it. In hindsight, I realised we were probably on a pretty bad realm with a lot of shit guilds since our guild did so well with a 13 year old raid leader. But I will say that I spent every available second researching and learning tactics for the fight, preparing to lead this army to glory. Yeah? Vocally, not by actually playing the game. Now, at this point we have killed Yogg and Anubarak and we realise that we are one of the better guilds on the server. Stas is amongst one of the best holy paladins, and probably the best on our server. I mean, his gear score was off the fucking wall, yeah? So, uh, don't come here, because have you, excuse me, you people, seen my item level, yeah? Take your opinions and do one. Fuck off, yeah? Look at my gear score, enough said, right? <clears throat> and Digby... Is one of the best disc priests on the server. And me, I am one of the best raid leaders. Without a WoW account. Oh, he does have a WoW account, he just can't play it very well. During this euphoria of gear score and achievements, we all decided to try for the server first Lich King Heroic. And we started really going hard with gearing alts for everyone. Besides you, <laughs> besides you, you all must gear all your alts, said the voice from upon high. We did two, one to two Ulduar raids and three to four Trial the Crusader raids a week to gear people in case of nerfs and buffs to classes. We were really fucking motivated for this. Like a teenage boy is motivated to see some boobs. <laughs> you don't need to be teenage to be motivated to see boobs. Never stops. I decided to delegate at this point. Being 13 years old, I wasn't allowed to stay up late as I was needed, as was needed for some of the raids. Nightmare, right? He's not old enough to stay up for the raids. So I had a chat with the old railer and asked him to start look, leading some raids again, claiming that I got a new job that would involve me having to gear up, early, get up earlier, and therefore also go to bed earlier. Hmm, tough life. Got to drink all the coffee. Am I right? He agreed to lead the raids later at night, but stated that he wasn't sure he would be as good as I was. This sentence was probably the point of no return for my ego. I was 13 years old, leading grown men in a video game, and I felt like Captain Miller leading my troops to find Private Ryan. Only I wasn't Tom Hanks. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification, mate. He continues, I was a teenager, with pimples, a deep voice, and Private Ryan was only an achievement in my mind. <laughs> that would be well funny in the film. It just popped up with achievement earned, found Private Ryan just out of nowhere. 
ICC Open. The Rathgate cinematic was glorious and I became an angry raid leader. I am not proud of it, but I admit I told quite a few grown men to go and fuck themselves and threaten to kick them from the raid and tarnish their name on the server. Because of all the time I had spent raid leading, my grades in school were suffering. My social life was diminished and no girl would ever touch my greasy, greasy body. <laughs> but I didn't give a fuck. My goal was in sight. The Lich King was not far away. I had led this guild through Ulduar and TOTC and I was not giving up until Arthas lay cold and lifeless on the ground. We killed the Lich King heroic service second. I was pleased with our achievement seeing as though the guild that did it but did it two weeks earlier only. After this I decided I wanted to play WoW for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I told someone else to raid lead for a while and thankfully Stas and Digby were both as done raiding as I was so I wouldn't have to pretend to be them in any farm raids we returned after some time and the guild was still raiding I was asked to return as raid leader or rather Stas was asked to be the raid leader I told them I would decide when the cataclysm came and if I decided not to raid lead that the old raid leader should take over my spot they agreed I didn't play WoW again until the day Kata launched. The launch was a shit show, but I still made it through Hyjal and even stopped by Vashir only to hearth away as fast as I could. I got all the way to the Twilight Highlands before I decided that I was done. I didn't want to play this game, so I quit. I didn't play WoW again until Mists of Pandaria, and I have never led a raid again. Thanks for reading my story, Preacher. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you experienced a Wrath of Lich King raiding to this day the only way I've ever done ICC in-game is soloing it for the mount and of course invincible never drops all the sadness i'm six minutes over man that was cool that's cool as fuck 13 get wrecked get wrecked ladies and gentlemen we will be back on tuesday either in the morning with dark souls 3 dlc but definitely in the night time for the halloween show well, we're showing off these swaggy costumes and doing some giveaways and all that kind of shit and playing some uh, cool horror VR stuff. But until then, have a great weekend. Do something cool. Hopefully, I'll have the uh, legacy out on Sunday. Hopefully, if all goes well. Well, other than that, be good. I've got to go pick up my boys. So I will see you again. Mm -hmm. No, go still be there. Woo, spoopy. Remember, get your spooky transmogs in. Horror transmogs. I want to see them. But yeah, please, please, please. Good, good. All right, I'll see you again. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>